Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. Today we're going to be talking about this, and we're going to be talking about this, which is the back of my Iron Man suit, or topics related to them anyway. So a while ago, I realized I didn't have any more time for any more personal projects, but I get loads and loads of suggestions of how to do things. A lot of people want me to revisit the Iron Man suit and do lots of things on that, and various other projects. So I set up a Facebook group called X Robots Group Projects, and the idea was that basically I didn't have time to do the projects, but there's so many people who are really engaged with doing projects, it'd be great for everyone to work together. And I set three projects in there. One of those was a design concept challenge to have an idea for a, a semi-fiction piece of technology based on the idea that if you could work with Tony Stark on a project what would you build? We had a few ideas early on but interest seems to have faded a little bit. Um, one of the others was about how to brand your YouTube channel and so on so a lot of people would like to post their own videos in there and some people are better at their PR than others. And the main project which has had the most interest was actually to design um, essentially um, an exoskeleton locking system for costuming that could be used in an Iron Man suit or could be used in lots of other projects. And basically the idea was that the whole thing would be open for anyone to use in any other projects, but lots of people could contribute ideas. So the initial problem was when you've got your Iron Man arm, how do you get your arms on, which are generally the piece you can't suit up by yourself, because when you've got one arm on it's really hard to reach the other shoulder, to do off a buckle or something like that. Um, in mine, I did this clever opening mechanism so that the thing actually grips your arm, but it does slip down over several hours of wear. So last time, well, it did some 3D printed latches, which you could activate perhaps cable driven from the cuff with one hand or somehow a hook that comes on. Obviously, when you move your arm up, the hook could come off, so it really needs to be a latch. So um, there've been quite a good lot of ideas in the group projects group on that including some simulations in CAD and some other things. And the eventual aim was that eventually the whole thing would be designed, so we'd have this whole locking, flexible exoskeleton that you could put any costume on, and that would cover your entire body and deal with all the joints and deal with all the locking. So let's have a look at some of the great ideas. First of all, I have two Facebook groups. One is X Robots Group Projects, which has a rules post pinned at the top which lays out what the specific group projects are to be um, discussed in this group, and the group is not for anything else. The other one is X Robots General Discussion, which is for anything. So lots of people have posted in here all sorts of stuff about 3D printers, about projects they're doing. Someone has built a little Hulkbuster, and apparently there's a paper craft available for that, which they have linked to. So let's have a look at that, which is fairly impressive. I think this one is actually built in foam. Uh, lots of other things, any of your own props, um, anything you want really. There's all sorts of circuits, someone is printing my R6 droid, that's a part of that. Um, icing a cake, any other ideas, various other props and things. This is um, actually a very good Pepper Cure helmet someone has made and the progress pictures are in there as well. So this is X Robots general discussion which is for anything. But in group projects we're discussing the specific projects I mentioned in the intro. So um, Evan here has been uh, very helpful in getting lots of stuff done. He's a 3D designer, he's using Autodesk Inventor and he has done lots of simulations and also um, made some parts and some of those parts were suggested by other members. So let's just scroll down through these. We've got sort of um, an Iron Man exoskeleton coming together but we'll have a closer look at that in a moment. So there's lots of ideas here about how we can make these latches that work. This is uh, Philip's idea for electromagnets and permanent magnets. We have a number of other things here with um, this is Gareth's idea for modifying those buckles you get on rucksacks and so on. Um, lots of other ideas and there's lots of other sketches. Some of these I tried to print um, in the last group projects update video. So um, let's just stroll down here. So S Steve Clark posted something which basically kicked off um, uh, the, the main idea here which is to make this buckle. Let's just see if we can make this bigger. There we go. So this is um, a buckle with a latch and it's released by pulling a pull cable, which you can see on the left here, down. And it, I didn't quite get this at first, but it's actually got some sliding sections, which mean when it's released it's locked in place around the pin. So that'd be really useful for places you can't reach, like the shoulder and so on. So um, there was quite a lot of discussion on that and then uh, basically Evan came along and actually did a simulation of this. So there's a little animation which I'll attempt to get to play. There we go, that's nice and big. So there we can see the pin pulling out, the two uh, 
parts opening up and the latch with a, with a sort of peg on being removed there so that the arm could be removed and then um, you know as long as you can get it aligned and you can let go of a string which would be sprung presumably um, that would latch the thing on and it would be attached to a peg and maybe that peg is on something flexible to give you that shoulder motion I don't think we've got an actual design for the rest of the shoulder um, and Evan has gone on to um, practically design or at least a lot of the upper torso so here is um, a picture of the spine and um, all these files are available to download there's a mega upload link um, there's some other parts here including some other videos that Evan has published um, about how that fits together so these are really worth watching um, there is a, a mega upload link somewhere in this group here we go which has got the STL files and I've actually downloaded those spine files these are printed in a combination of NinjaFlex and ABS and I've printed them out so let's have a look at those files and let's have a look at the physical parts here are the parts, we've got these uh, blue parts which will be made of a rigid material, I've printed them in ABS and um, what we've got is a cap and a mount there which um, repeats up the spine and uh, as if you remember from the diagram the bottom of the spine appears to be different but this is all I'm going to print for now and there's some pegs and holes that um, fit those together then we've got the NinjaFlex part which is red here and that's actually printed in two halves so it can be split on the bed and then the uh, two halves will be stuck together to make that thing but completely round and those mounts between the blue parts I've printed these out so let's have a look at them so here is a selection of the parts um, these of course are in two halves and the bottom ones or at least the whole thing fits neatly in there so these fit into these grooves which works pretty well and then we've got these caps that go on top and the caps have got holes for the corresponding pegs unfortunately the tolerance isn't quite there either with the printer or the design I'm not sure which so they don't plug in so I'm gonna have to snap off the pegs but then obviously I've got a flat surface I can make an acetone weld which will melt the ABS and we can stick those on and then hopefully we can build up several sections of spine here I've got enough for uh, two at least and three caps so let's get those stuck together and we'll see how bendy it is so I've stuck those together, at least these uh, sort of three sections with the two NinjaFlex parts and it's worked out pretty well, that's quite flexible um, I should add that I printed these in about 30% infill so they're quite soft so you could adjust the infill density of the NinjaFlex to make that firmer or um, you know, more bendy or less bendy um, it bends in all directions pretty well there's a couple of gaps in between the parts but that's just the tolerance of the parts so that could easily be taken out in the model um, and that bends pretty well, I think that would be quite good as a spine and obviously we'd have different parts mounted on these I never even actually finished painting the back of my Iron Man torso obviously some of these sections should be gold but you can imagine this being fitted inside the suit and uh, being attached to various parts and various parts bridging out to the armour I guess it goes that way round probably that way up, I'm not really sure um, but if you can uh, have a look at this suit here you can see these sort of um, dividing parts this is all one big solid section which is completely solid but if you're actually building a flexible suit for someone to fight in and do all sorts of action poses you'd really want that whole lot of flexibility so you'd want these sections all to be broken up and those all to be attached to different sections of the spine so that they can actually all flex around and move independently and you probably want to do that in several other areas of the suit um, a lot more than you actually see um, in a lot of these costumes that people put together so the chest plate is another example that's multiple sections uh, we'd probably want to have something maybe sort of two of these coming along by the ribs um, and the rib sections being um, separate and being flexible thanks to Evan for this and the other parts that he's designed I need to give a shout out to Evan's own YouTube channel under the name Chaos Maker and Evan is also running his own Patreon crowdfunding campaign to help fund his work so have a look at those pages there's some really impressive 3d stuff and if you'd like to subscribe to his channel or fund his patreon crowdfunding campaign then please do so but anyone can get involved in these projects just by going in the group you don't need to be good at 3d design or have a 3d printer or have anything really other than an idea that you can draw on paper and post that into the photo section of the group or onto the wall really or you can just write down what you think in words or get involved with other people's ideas the idea is for everyone to get involved in a big group project and perhaps if we can get enough parts together that work well this can be the next X-Robots Iron Man suit that I build when Hulkbuster is finished and check out my other videos if you haven't already seen them for that and lots of other projects involving 3D printing and other fabrication techniques